Hello, my name is Kevin Schusler. I'm Assembly Manager, Head of Technical Assistance for Command Light. In this video today, we're going to show you how to either upgrade or to install a brand new version 3 uh, holster box. Um, so the tools you'll need for this basically is the screwdriver that we send you with your, uh, your light tower or just a very fine flat bladed screwdriver. Uh, just some kind of knife to trim uh, the sheathing off of the control cable and then just a pair of wire strippers. So uh, when you receive your light tower uh, or your upgrade, uh, you'll basically get your holster box. You'll just remove the four mounting screws on the front. This will allow you to uh, open this up to get to the circuit board. So for a, uh, an upgrade, uh, you will already, already have your control cable routed through your truck that went into your previous versions. Um, on a new one, uh, you're gonna have to start from scratch. So basically what I do is take this cable in and get to the bottom of the holster box. That'll give me plenty of it. And then I just kind of mark that wire where it needs to go. Then I'll bring this out. And at this point here, or you can push it all the way through. It's, it's a little easier to push it all the way through sometimes, I believe. And then go ahead and you'll just cut the sheathing off. Being careful not to hit any of the control wires. Peel this outer sheathing off. Once you're inside here, uh, there'll be a, a wrap on the control cable. Just go ahead and remove all of these extra insulation in your way. Now, if you're doing a, a retrofit, this will already be done. And in your other one, all you have to do is pull it out of the, your first holster and then uh, reinsert the wires back into this one. Go ahead and cut off the reading twine. Then you're down to your color wires. So in here, there's a bunch of connectors uh, that basically pull in and plug out. So what you'll do is you'll go ahead and remove these. Wiggling them back and forth helps a little bit to get them out of there. Having little fingers helps too. Okay, so always start up here at the very top one. You'll go ahead and just using the uh, supplied schematic, you'll go ahead and put these uh, wire colors in, in the correct order into this black one. Basically, this is just all of your motion, also your power and uh, the uh, initial surge uh, to start auto park sequence. I've got these, uh, the first connectors wires separated from the rest. So then you'll just take your wire strippers, strip off, uh, fairly good length and what I like to do is double these up just to get a nice good bite on them. So once you get those stripped off, uh, I'll start with the first one which will be a red with a black stripe. And strip that off, double it up. And then that will go into the first port of the connector. So you'll just put that into the top right there and using the small flat bladed screwdriver just go ahead and tighten that down nice and securely on it. Give it a nice tug to make sure that it's biting down and holding. Then you'll go ahead and just do the rest of them in order on this off of the schematic. Okay, okay I've got all of the wires uh, in the correct order into this, uh, this pin connector. Uh, go ahead and then you can uh, pull your cable back just till the sheathing's gone and just kind of give it a little snug down to hold that into place at that length. Then you'll just go ahead and insert the plug right back into its connector. Uh, these are uh, easy to get one over, so just make sure that it's nice and flush on both sides, and then you'll be sure you're lining up correctly with the contact pin. Then you just proceed to your next connector and so on down uh, uh, all the way through all the different plugs. The next one that you'll be doing, uh, this gray one here, or the uh, gray-white, um, they are actually all color-coded, uh, so you can't get the wrong number pin in anything. So uh, basically they'll match color for color. So we'll go ahead and do this. This is basically your light light banks and your strobe. Okay. 
Now we've got this second connector uh, hooked up. Two things I wanted to mention here. Uh, the, basically these three here are your lamps. This is your strobe. What the blue with the red stripe is, is it is an auxiliary uh, power wire. Uh, this will be hooked into this port here unless you are tying in uh, to a dual control system. Then it goes to a different spot. Uh, there's another schematic for that. And what that'll do is that pulses and that will switch um, between this controller and your VMUX, your wireless, whatever your other controller may be. Uh, but for standard hookup, this is where that will go. Again, once you get these hooked up, go ahead and press them in. Um, also, when I'm wiring a new tower, I always do the holster controller box first. Uh, and then wire it up into the tower. On a refurb, uh, the tower will already be wired and coming down. Uh, just make sure that all of your truck power is off. Uh, these wires will be active, um, so any of the hot wires will be carrying 12 volt DC through it and possibility of causing a spark or shorting or possibly even burning up the board. So uh, just make sure your truck power's off and you'll be fine with the retrofit. Then we'll go ahead and proceed to the next one. Uh, this is just a power wire. It's just a single black with a white stripe uh, into the green connector. The rest of those are left blank. And this will just go into the fourth pin down or the second pin up. And then go ahead, put that connector back in. The next one uh, will be your black five pin. And this one here is uh, basically your sensor. So it'll be your nest, your center, um, your elevated warning, and then also your, uh, your ground coming from the tower. Okay, so now we've got all of these hooked up. Uh, these guys will just go into the black connector plugs in. The last wire you'll have in there is a red with a white. This is a very critical. Um, there are three power wires in here, actually four if you count the blue red. Uh, this is one of these power wires. This will go into the center port right here on the schematic, but it also does require uh, both above and below it. So above it, what you will do is you will bring in your vehicle ground uh, to the port above and then vehicle power down below. What this does is it keeps this board and a sensor active, so if your generator shut off on an AC tower, uh, everything stays active to give you your elevated cab warning. Um, the last pin is just the black three pin connector. It goes over here. There is nothing supplied from the tower for it. It is simply your tie in to your truck elevated warning. So on the lower port of that, uh, basically you will um, bring, uh, uh, that will be your control wire uh, back to your elevated warning device. Then the second one, uh, the middle port on this connector will be whatever your elevated warning system is looking for. So if you want a, a positive to come back out on your signal wire uh, you'll put a positive in here it's the same with a negative a negative in here will give you a negative out whenever this tower is elevated uh, once you get those hooked up uh, you can just go ahead and repin that one uh, there is a port uh, both at the top and the bottom uh, for you to bring in your power your ground and your signal wires Once this has all been fully hooked up, you can go ahead and power up your truck or hook up the truck part of that. Um, once you're energized, there are a couple of LED indicator lights in here, a green and a red. A pulsing green is a good uh, deal. That shows that the board is communicating with the controller, uh, that it's getting all the correct powers that it needs, both from the tower and from your uh, truck supplied voltages. And once you get the green light, then you'll be okay to go ahead and just close it up. I take some wire ties. I do like to leave the loops in there just in case um, somebody would down the road would have to mess with something. Uh, it's always nice to have a little extra wire in there. So I just tied it up nice uh, and clean with some wire ties. Then just go ahead and reapply uh, the lid of your holster box. This here is basically uh, showing you just how to hook up the hand controllers to these holsters. Uh, the ones you have uh, will be this version here. Um, we have just now come out with this newer one. It's a little more user friendly. And what we were finding, uh, these are basically just Cat5 ports that go into a Cat5 connector right here. Uh, very simple, they just plug in and click and lock. Um, there's also the little release tag. The trick to these is 
when you put this in you have to get that tab into that little notch there uh, if you do not it will break that tab off and you'll get intermittent functions and basically you'll end up having to get a new coil cord so once uh, you have that into that little slot then you will just go ahead line it up and you'll fill it go as soon as you get it to that point push it down and then lock this guy in then you got a nice sturdy both the cat5 clip and this connector are holding that strain relief uh, the same works identical same principle on your hand controller it'll be the same deal there um, to remove these you simply just uh, loosen up the, the strain relief slide your cable out and press the clip same process we're going back in into the notch back up into the controller press down make sure that clicks and then go ahead and tighten those down and then you can tighten this nut down very nice and tight and that'll secure that the new ones uh, since we were getting a lot of these broken off uh, by people not getting them into that slot we came out with this one much easier for a customer to do that you don't have to make sure anything's lined up um, they're just go ahead and you mate these two till they lock into each other and then just begin screwing this down in its uh, inner thread on this one and that will hook up this new version of controller for you and then you're set to go